1400 BC. The mighty Egyptian civilization is in its golden age. Its ruler is Ramses II, a man who intends to be the greatest of the pharaohs. He will make his mark by building. He built everywhere. Vast statues, towering obelisks, temples carved from living rock. Ramses is a giant of a man. He dominates this kingdom for 67 years, pushing it on to ever greater glory. North, south, east, and west, he's got a temple going up. He's building a new capital city. He's creating jobs like no one has created before. The ruins of what Ramses built still stand. But 33 centuries on, with the aid of new research and cutting edge graphics technology, the true scale of his ambition can now be fully revealed. Extraordinary feats of engineering performed with only the most basic tools. Thousands of people, thousands of tons of stone. All manipulated by the will of one man. We can now reveal the lost world of Ramses the Great. Ramses is the heir to the throne of Egypt. One day, he will become Pharaoh, ruler of a civilization already 2,000 years old. But the empire he stands to inherit is emerging from a time of great political and religious upheaval, and Ramses is part of a dynasty that has forced its way to power. He watched as his grandfather, the first Ramses, became the first of the family to wear the Egyptian crown. Now he watches his father, King Seti, enforce his will through military power. You have to remember that the Ramesides were a new family. Ramses I had only reigned for a year and a half. And then Seti comes to the throne and rules for about 11 years. Ramses' family has to show that they are fit to rule. They choose to do it by building. Building is the tool that pharaohs have always used to show themselves to the world. And they do it at Karnak, the vast temple complex in the great city of Thebes. This is the domain of the god Amun-Re, the imperial god of the Egyptian New Kingdom. Karnak is where the pharaohs worship their god. They are his chief priests. By the time of Ramses' birth, Karnak is already vast. Buildings were continuously added or removed or changed. Amun-Re's sanctuary lies at its heart. Around it, each pharaoh in turn has made a demonstration of his power and his piety adding his own new structure or gateway pylon, a new pathway to the god. So in periods when you have great pharaohs, pharaohs that are conquering the world, Karnak Temple's expanding. Karnak is a place where every Egyptian king needs to make his mark. So it makes absolute sense that Ramses II would be one of those kings that would need to extend um, Karnak Temple. To make his mark, Ramses' father conceives the idea of a grand pillared or hypostyle hall. His firstborn son, his chosen heir, will help him build it. Well, I think the transition between the reign of Seti I and Ramses II was a very gradual one. And Ramses was given a fair amount of responsibility as a young man. At the age of 10, Ramses was made a general of the army. The site for the building is in the temple approaches between two great pylons. Today, any visitor to Karnak will be overawed by what father and son built. The Hypostyle Hall is absolutely vast. You could fit most of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris within its walls. 
Investigators are now trying to decipher how the hypostyle hall was constructed and recapture what this extraordinary building looked like during the reign of the man who built it. This space was covered by a huge roof resting on stone supports. The columns packed closely to accommodate the weight. So if you want a large room, you have to put in an awful lot of columns. So quite literally, the hypostyle hall is a vast forest of columns. We know that the ancient Egyptian builders had nothing more sophisticated to work with than stone pounders and copper chisels. And yet, they undertook a project which would be ambitious even by modern standards. Well, you're not building the columns individually. What you do is you lay out the foundations for the entire building, the column bases, and the side walls. The building's plans demanded 134 columns. The central colonnade had pillars that were seven stories high. Clues to how the builders set about the task lie in these wall paintings from a private tomb, a kind of 3,000-year-old construction manual. When deciphered, they reveal a highly inventive solution. This wonderful 18th dynasty scene of mud brick making could be a photograph taken in an Egyptian village even today because the techniques that it shows have not changed in about 5,000 years. Water is being dipped out of a pool surrounded by trees and it's mixed with mud and probably wheat chaff temper to make the mixture which is then put into molds and put on the ground to dry for a couple of days. The mud bricks are then carried over and used to build walls, or in this case, a ramp for the construction of a hypostyle hall. The use of ramps in the construction is a key discovery. On this wall painting, the ramp leads to a hall that appears buried. Evidence indicates this technique was used elsewhere in Karnak because the remains of one of these ramps can still be seen. It's now possible to work out how the builders did it. They didn't use scaffold or cranes to raise the blocks above the ground. They raised the ground itself. You lay the first level of blocks for all the column bases and you fill inside with dirt and you build mud brick ramps on either side. You bring your next level of blocks, these are all roughed out, and you place them over the next level. And then you fill that in again, you extend your ramps out further and repeat the process. So when the building is finished, it is completely buried under a mountain of earth and huge mud brick ramps on either side. The ramps were only temporary structures, but they were hugely labor intensive. The slope would have been around seven degrees. To reach to the height of the columns in the hypostyle hall, it must have been as long as two football fields. 25,000 tons of stone were dragged up these long slopes to make the columns. The column drums were so massive that they had to be made in two D-shaped blocks. Each tipped the scales at 10 tons. Ramses masons locked these stones together so tightly that some haven't shifted in more than 32 centuries. Peter Brand hunts for clues as to how they did it with Dennis Stocks, a specialist in ancient building techniques. The 